Every now and then I get a little hankering to photograph an eclipse. On October 14th, there will be a ring of fire eclipse that looks like this. And in April of 2024, a total solar eclipse that looks like this. So if you've always wanted to photograph one but never knew where to start, then this video is for you. And it's sponsored by Squarespace. So there's that. If you like using your eyes, you're gonna wanna use your ears right now. Scientifically speaking, you should never look directly into the sun, I guess, even if a president does it. So when it comes to solar eclipses, you'll wanna first get yourself a pair of solar eclipse safety glasses for you and a solar filter for your camera. Some people say that you can use 16 stop ND filters, but the solar filter will cut UV and IR light, which will protect your camera sensor. I don't know of any ND filters that do that, so you run the risk of damaging your camera's optics if you use an ND filter instead of a solar filter. The solar filters themselves will range in price from $25 on up to a few hundred. Also, while we're on the safety note, do not use an ND filter with an optical viewfinder. Use live view or an electric viewfinder instead. Even with a solar filter, I'd prefer shooting in live view. If you're new to photography, the longer your focal length, the bigger the sun will look. So if you're lucky enough to have a super telephoto lens on your hands, well, you're gonna wanna get that puppy out. And if you're a beginner who owns a super telephoto lens, can I borrow some cash? Take a look at this cool comparison our pal Jim Doty created. I'm just kidding, I've never met the guy. But it goes to show you how your lens focal length is really gonna play a big part in how impressive your composition will be. Maybe you have an old kit lens like the 75 to 300 millimeter, slap that on a crop sensor camera and you have the 35 millimeter equivalent of a 450 millimeter lens. So that should do you nicely. Another option is a mirror or a reflex lens. These lenses are like mini telescopes for your camera. And while not known for their image quality, a 500 millimeter reflex lens will only run you about $400. Another option is to try digiscoping. This is essentially when you put your camera up to the eyepiece of a spotting scope or telescope and snap the photo. If you have a spotting scope or telescope, they even make adapters that allow you to detach your camera to do this more effectively. Once you decide on your lens, you're gonna wanna get your paws on a tripod next. This will come in handy to not only handle the weight of your rig, but also if you need to shoot with a slower shutter speed or bracket your exposure. First, you're gonna wanna shoot these photos in RAW to preserve as much dynamic range and detail as possible. For your camera settings, start with your ISO at 100. When the time of the eclipse is near, slap on your solar filter, don those stylish glasses, and take some test shots to figure out the best shutter speed and aperture. You don't want the details of the sun to be blown out, and you don't want to be so underexposed that you lose other details in your composition. We'd also recommend shooting bracketed exposures, so this way in post-production, you can merge the details captured at different exposure levels into one final image. This is key for high dynamic range subjects like the mother friggin' sun. If you can remotely trigger your shutter release, this is also a good way to avoid vibrations and ensure a sharper image. Call now. If it's an annular eclipse, like the upcoming Ring of Fire, you must leave the solar filter on your lens the entire time. If it's a total eclipse, like the one in April of 2024, you can take the filter off at totality, otherwise your image will be too dark. Totality begins when you see the famous diamond ring effect appear. When the diamond ring effect appears on the other side, totality is ending, and you should put your filter back on your lens and glasses back on your face. Now, if you wanna know where and when you can see the upcoming eclipse, our good buddies at NASA, just kidding, never met the guy, made this handy website. Only eight US states will be lucky enough to catch the ring of fire in all of its glory, but even saps like us in Chicago will still get a little piece of the action. This is a good chance to practice before the main event of totality in April. Now, if you love ad breaks, you're gonna love what we have to say about Squarespace. We've been Squarespace customers since 2013, way before this YouTube channel started. We currently pay for four Squarespace websites and striptriviapod.com is one of them. If you're not raking in money hand over fist with your podcast, you might wanna check out Squarespace's new member areas where you can sell access to gained content like video classes, digital downloads, or newsletters. You can also showcase your photography with Squarespace's professional portfolio designs. Customize the layout, the look, and the feel to make it your own. Also, you can schedule and book appointments straight from your website. You need to log in that client meeting? Well, they can easily see your availability and reschedule if needed, making your life a heck of a lot easier. Here's what our new podcast website looks like. And if you're in the market for a new website or domain, we'll save you 10% when you go to squarespace.com slash mango street, or just click the link down in the description or use the code mango street at checkout. The options are virtually endless. Sounds like there's just three options. Okay, there's three options. When the diamond ring effect appears on the other side of the sun, 
It's the sun, right? Oh, wait, no, the moon. I'll just say the other side. <laughs> it would be the moon, though. Don't include any of it. <laughs> <laughs>